Hello and welcome back to the channel. You join me here on episode two of the Ford Ranger 2018 rebuild project. If you missed the last episode, here's a quick recap. I bought this super cheap 2018 Ford Ranger pickup truck from a salvage auction site. And the reason it was at a salvage auction site was because it had been involved in a huge accident. Once the car was delivered on the back of a recovery truck, I managed to get the car jacked up and I noticed as soon as I got the wheel off that the mounting that holds the suspension in place was completely twisted backwards. This was something that I couldn't repair myself on a driveway so I sent the car off to a body shop to get that structural damage pulled straight. The car was at the body shop for around 3 or 4 days but once we got it back the inner wing and the suspension bracket was 100% straight so we could begin tearing the old suspension off the car and replacing it with our new used parts. Once we got the new suspension parts on, we had to bleed the brakes because we had no brakes on the car before and that brings us on to today. Now like I said in the previous episodes, this is my own car. I'm going to be using it to transport parts and goods and whatnot just to help in the future projects if we do get that far. Today is not the nicest weather, it's raining on and off, it's freezing but the car needs painting. And previously in the rebuilds before, what I used to do was drop the car off to the body shop to get painted. But today, because this is gonna be my own personal car that I'm just gonna use for work, I'm gonna try and paint it myself. Now, the garage that I've sourced or that I'm allowed to borrow is not the cleanest, it's not a low bake, it's not something professional, so I'm not expecting the best job, but I'm just gonna give it a go. I've never painted before, but the bonnet needs painting, the wing needs painting and like I showed you last week we have a lot of body kit extras that I just wanted to make the car personal I wanted to make it my own so let's go have a look at that now to begin with we've got this sporty I, I, I don't know if you'd call it Raptor style but it is a sportier bumper we've got the wide arches we've got this rear tailgate cover which I thought looked pretty cool it's got Ranger written on it and then this massive Bonnet scoop. I don't know about you, but I think that looks pretty cool. The bonnet is a copy bonnet. It's not an original Ford bonnet. It's an insurance approved bonnet. I don't know if that makes a difference, but it's a lot cheaper than buying a, a used genuine bonnet. It lines up pretty well. The bonnet, the bumper, and the grills and the side arches are all plastic. They're in plastic primer. I've heard that primer's no good. So what we're going to do is sand those down, get them in 2K primer, which is supposed to be a lot stronger primer. It just stops the paint failing or something. I don't know. We're just giving it a go. Let's get the car over to the garage and start from there. Now, for all you eagle-eyed viewers that have noticed in the background, this wheel is still cambered. I haven't had it tracked or anything, but we do need to get a four-wheel alignment, get all the cambers set correct. Because if we're looking at it from head on, you can see the wheel is still not straight but I assure you all the suspension parts have been replaced. We just need to get the camber adjusted once we get onto a tracking machine, I hope. So let's give M&M Recovery a quick shout, get the car loaded and straight to the garage. Straight on with it then. Once I got the car into the body shop, my initial plan was just to paint the wing, bonnet and bumper, but I noticed a couple of small little dents in the driver door, so I thought whilst we're at it, we might as well get the job perfect. So I grinded back that door and all the dents. I put a tiny layer of body filler on, sanded it down, firstly with the 80 grit on a orbital sander, and then finished it off by hand. I'm now here over in this old dusty garage but it's the best we can do it's the best I could get hold of at a short notice as you saw it's raining outside this at least holds a bit of the weather away 
So, work is well on the way. Let's run through what I've got done so far. To start with, I know I said I was gonna use 2K primer on all the plastics. After speaking to a couple of people, the choices that they said would be best is either use 320 sandpaper and sand the original primer that it came with and base coat on top of that or throw a plastic primer on top. Now, because it's late in the evening now, I don't have a shop that I can go get plastic primer from, so I'm just gonna run with the 320 sandpaper, key the surface up, and then go with the base coat on top of that. With the bonnet, I'm going to go ahead and wet flat the bonnet. So all this original primer is gonna get wet flatted. Same with this plastic here, I'm going with just a scotch just to key up the surface and then base coat straight on top of that. Now what I'm thinking is with this bonnet scoop, to tiger seal it down to the bonnet first and then base coat the whole bonnet with the scoop bonded in place. Now, what I didn't notice was there was a couple of dents on the door. So I went ahead and sanded that down, completely exposing the metal, then went over with a thin layer of filler and now I've just sanded the filler down and it's ready for primer. I did notice a couple of spots like this where the paint was peeling. So I've sanded that back and when I primer that part of the door, I'll go ahead and primer the top lip here as well. Overall, going good. I think it's gonna be a long night. I need to get the whole car covered. I've masked off as much as I can, but I'll use larger covers to go cover the rest of the vehicle. Just to go over the plan in terms of painting the car, once it comes to base coat, I'm going to base coat the whole bonnet with the scoop bonded in place over to the wing. And then I will just simply blow base coat around here stop the base coat around halfway across the door and then I will lacquer the whole door. So when you look at it, the, if the color match is good, we shouldn't be able to notice that there's two different areas of paint because the lacquer will be one skin over the top of the whole door. That's the plan anyway, let's see how it turns out. Now if you do notice that there's sections missing or I haven't recorded a section, I am trying my best, I'm here on my own. It's late in the evening and it's a huge vehicle. I mean, the bonnet is just so large, just to sand it, it's gonna take me ages. So I'm gonna crack on as quick as I can and then I'll check in with you guys at key points. Once the primed areas of the car are drying, I'm moving on to measuring the exact center of the bonnet for that bonnet scoop to be absolutely in the middle of the bonnet. The last thing I want is the bonnet scoop to be too far to the left or too far to the right. So once I've made those marks, I'm using a 3M adhesive promoter panel wipe, and that just makes sure that the bond between the scoop and the bonnet is 100%. On top of the 3M tape that the bonnet scoop comes with, I'm applying a small bead of Tiger Seal. Because there's no fixing on this bonnet scoop, I want that bonnet scoop solid, permanently fixed to the bonnet. You might think that's a bit over the top, but I don't want any chances of this bonnet scoop flying off once the wind hits it on the motorway. Being super, super careful now, I only get one chance at this, just following those markings that I made earlier, just sitting that bonnet scoop perfectly in the center of the bonnet. That done, it's back onto the primed area. So one last final wet sand, and that's just to get rid of any lips or edges that the primer might have had that will get it ready for base coat. Wow, so the time has just gone midnight and I think I have got everything that we are gonna paint sanded down. We've got the front bumper, we've got the front grille, we've got all four arches, we've got the bonnet. The bonnet scoop I have now put adhesive and it's pretty solid, it's not going anywhere. The wing is flattered down, the primered areas are all sanded down nice and smooth 
and I think like I said what I'm going to do is base coat over the primer and then carry on with the lacquer all the way along the door. So let me get the base coat mixed up and I think we'll start with the bonnet Let's see how it goes. Although getting dust on our paintwork is inevitable in this garage, I'm using a tack cloth just to get rid of any small specks of dust that might be sitting on the panels. I'm treating this first coat of base coat as just a mist coat, so I'm trying not to go on too heavy and I'm not focusing on trying to get 100% coverage. I just want to get that first layer of base coat on and then I will try for 100% coverage on the second coat. With that first coat of base coat applied I'm going on with the second coat, this time a little bit heavier making sure I'm getting every single edge so there's no patches missing, every single nook and cranny on this bonnet scoop I want every single piece covered in base coat, I don't want to see any patches of primer beneath. At this point I'm feeling pretty good. The base coat went on amazingly, there's barely any dust and the bonnet, the bumper look absolutely fantastic. Little did I know it's all downhill from here once I get this lacquer applied. I've now got the lacquer on on top of the base coat and we've had a bit of a disaster let's run through what's happened to begin with the bumper is looking absolutely fantastic there's a couple of specks of dirt but nothing that a 2000 wet sand won't get out same with the bonnet it looks absolutely stunning it does have these specks of dust I wasn't expecting anything different in a garage like this where there's just dust flying everywhere same with the grill that turned out great I wasn't able to paint all the arches just because there's not enough places to prop them up when this car's taken up majority of the garage. Now onto the disaster. As you can see as I went on with the lacquer on the wing, I didn't finish it that's why it's looking a little hazy 
but I got this massive run in the lacquer. So I just stopped where I was and I think I'm gonna wait for it to dry, sand it down and then go back over it with lacquer on this wing and into the door. This is a bittersweet moment. The front of the car is looking spectacular. The bonnet looks great. We've got the gloss black around the grill. We've got the front bumper completely in gloss black and it's looking absolutely stunning. I don't even want to look at the driver's side because it's such a shame we didn't get the wing and the door done properly. But I did try and wet sand it a little bit and it was just burning through the lacquer. It's just not cured yet. So what I'm going to do is wait for that door and wing to completely dry up. I'll then sand it all down and just lacquer the door and the wing. But for now, it's just what we're going to have to deal with. And in the meantime, I'll let this lacquer that I've put on the bonnet and the bumper completely cure. Once it is cured, I think I'll wait around four or five days and then I will 2000 the whole bonnet and bumper and then I'll go over it with a compound and get it hopefully looking. 10 out of 10. The reason why, there's two reasons why I wanted to paint this car myself. Number one, I felt like we cheated you a little bit by getting the car pulled in the first episode at the body shop. So I wanted to go ahead and do something that I haven't done before and paint it. Now I'm sure there's painters out there watching this video absolutely punching the sky thinking what on earth is this guy doing? He's done it completely incorrect. But I am learning. So if you've got any feedback, drop it down in the comments and Maybe on the next one we'll, we'll give it a better shot. But for now, that is what we've done. It's been a few hours, so what I'm going to do is move the car out of the workshop and then I'll have more space to work on these arches. The reason why I didn't paint the arches was because I was trying to find space in this garage to prop them up around the vehicle, but I just couldn't find anywhere good enough because all the stands were in use with the bumper, the grill. So, I'm going to move the car out of the workshop, get all these arches propped up and then I will blow them in base coat and lacquer. And hopefully we don't get any runs in these either. Let's see how it goes. A true bittersweet ending to this video. As you can see, the bonnet and the bumper are looking absolutely fantastic. With this bonnet scoop, I'm not disappointed. There were two versions of these bonnet scoops and I think we went for the better one. It was a bit more pricey, but I think it's well worth it. But as you can see, the wing did not turn out how we wanted. And as the car was at the garage, Eminem Recovery picked it up from the garage and on the way back, I said to them, drop it to the tire shop to get the new rim on with the tire from the spare wheel that we had on the car and that's just because those tires those BF Goodriches are so expensive so I thought reuse the one that was on the spare tire and then we'll get a standard tire put on the spare wheel if that makes sense but we've still got so much to do on this car before it's usable I think at this point it is definitely drivable but I'm just not going on that first test drive yet until we get that camber sorted I don't want the car wobbling around, especially with these massive tires on. So once that camber gets sorted, we will definitely take it on the first test drive. I'm actually on holiday for the next week. I am flying out tomorrow. So unfortunately we won't have an episode next Sunday, but we will have one the following Sunday since I'm on holiday for a week and then I can spend a week getting this car, hopefully 100% complete. Goodbye.